And the offenses you have to prepare for from Oklahoma State to Alcorn and out of all right. <laughs> we are. I mean, they're great offenses, and the one that we are going up against, one of the best in the country, Coach Malzahn, Coach Lashley do a great job calling plays, scheming it up. They've got a talented group of running backs, big offensive line, four returning starters, and the quarterback is a dynamic player. Fullbacks, big, physical, tough, um, and the tight ends, you know, some of them look like they're wide receivers out there running around. So they've got a lot of weapons, a lot of talent, so it's going to be a big challenge. The quarterback was playing safety a couple years ago. Does he act and look like a quarterback at this point? Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, he is fast. He's electric. You know, once he gets in the open field, he's a dynamic player. Um, so he, he's a big challenge for us. you got three running backs, I think, that have 500 yards. of their 800 total yards. Just talk about those three guys. <laughs> they're, they're, they're a special group of guys. I mean, i got to imagine they're, they're probably the deepest uh, – deepest tailback spot in the conference and that's saying something and I mean they're all kind of different different threats um, but they're all dynamic players once they get in the ball in their hands you know some are built for speed some are built for power but they're all legitimate big time SEC backs. Obviously it helps with your D-line tail the way A.J. Curtis played this past week. Yeah. Talk about what you saw. Uh, you know I think Coach Turner again I've said a bunch that David Turner's a great D-line coach uh, does a great job developing those kids and uh, you know just getting the depth that we have and we kept rolling them I think almost every three plays we were rolling them. You know, luckily we were fortunate enough. I think we were 86% three and outs on the day, which is you know what we expect. Um, but the D line had a huge part of that, and the depth at that spot is, is is big for us. I know you want obviously you want the sacks, but still those guys are getting DBUs. Yeah, they were. You know, the, the big thing that we've stressed the whole time, you know, since January is creating mayhem, and they were getting PBUs. You know, tackles for loss. I think we had eight on the day. I think we've averaged eight. Um, you know, but that's going to be a big challenge. You know, Saturday because they have such a great offensive line and a set of receivers and running backs. What's been your impression of Justin Cox early on? I know that he's wanted to get yeah, some well, team the, My favorite play from Saturday, and Coach Mullen, I know y'all couldn't hear it. That's what Coach Mullen just talked about for five minutes. On the kickoff team on Saturday, Justin Cox was the first one down by 10 yards. And it wasn't that other people weren't trying. They were running down too, but just Justin is such a dynamic athlete. And uh, Coach Towns is doing a great job with him, getting him ready. And, uh, you know, expect him to just keep getting better and better every week. I noticed Gabe's had a different number on Gabe Miles. He's been getting some looks at scout things uh, like this week. Gabe's awesome. Gabe's a great kid. I think he got a lot of juice points. I, I think he got a special number because of juice points. I don't know. When you look at um, Chris Jones, he joked last after the game saying that he's partially a defensive tackle and a full defensive end. Right. How has this transition kind of gone? Well, I mean, just the way Coach Turner teaches it, a three techniques, a five techniques, a nine technique doesn't really change. The twos, the fours, the sevens, all the same thing. And uh, just his development's been great. Um, he, you know, the, some of the plays that he's in, I mean, you can see a physical difference in the, you know, the way the plays are going and, you know, things we ask him to do. So he's, he's a, he's going to be a big time player. Obviously, linebackers are so key in this game against what Auburn right. has to do, get to the edge with their running backs. Right. How key would it be getting a guy like the line back to get set? Yeah, I mean, I think right now we're six or seven that are legitimate SEC kids. I mean, Richie Brown uh, had a great game Saturday. He was a champion in special teams, a champion on defense. Uh, but Necrez Brown played really well. Zach Jackson for two weeks in a row has done a really good job. And then, you know, the kids like Skinner, Bernardrick, and Matt Wells, I mean, they're, I got to imagine, they're three of, you know, you know, some of the best linebackers in the conference. How did Kendrick grade out now that he had a game in there starting? In yeah, the Kendrick's good. I mean, I think he's, you know, reminiscent of the kid at LSU a couple of years ago. You know, that kind of difference maker in the, uh, you know, in the run game, the pass game. He's got a nose for the ball. Great kid. And, uh, you know, his nickname's Poke Dog, and he's just <laughs> he's sticking his head into everything. He's, he's awesome. I think they're seven for seven in the red zone. What do they do so well when they get everything. into the score? Yeah. They do everything well. So they put a lot of dr window dressing on all their plays, but at their core, they are a physical SEC football team. They want to run the ball. They want to be physical. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, when you get down the red zone, that's SEC football. They're really good at it. I'm familiar with these defensive coaches over at Auburn. Do you have a decent idea of what they're going to want to do? Uh, sure do. Yeah. Uh, Talk about what you've seen over for in two weeks. I know they're trying to transition their defense. Yeah, you know they got a lot of people back. You know, they had some people out and they got them back. Uh, they play really, really hard. They do a nice job defensively. They're good football coaches. Uh, you know, they can put their kids in the best position to make plays. And you know, they're gonna play some man coverage. They're gonna play some zone coverage. <laughs> you know, Melvin the, is working with their corners. He was over here too, so he knows a little bit about us too. And you know, the rest of them, Cheese and all the rest of them. You know, we've. Coach can see each other for a long time. It's not like we uh, don't know exactly how they're going to line up and what they're going to do. And, uh, you know, it's about execution. It comes down to it. The same thing happened uh, against Oklahoma State. You know, if you execute, 
You're going to have those opportunities. I can't tell you when the opportunity is going to occur in a game. You know what I'm saying? But we've got to be ready every play for that opportunity. And I think that's the key to the mentality with our young players. You know, they're, they're excited. They're juiced up. But, you know, as soon as they say, well, maybe not this play. That's the play you, you, you get devastated on, you know. You got to be keyed up for every play, ready to go. What have you seen from from Tyler today? Obviously, being back and mm -hmm. getting back yeah, in the you room. know, he's a fifth-year senior. So uh, you know, what we do is, you know, he he knows what to do. So it's not a it's not a big deal for us. You know, if he was a young young kid, it would be kind of tough for him. You know what I'm saying? But he's been through it. He understands our first down game plan, third down game plan, and red zone game plan. And you know, we'll go with it. What'd you think of Damien's first? <laughs> you know, it's like he told me before the game. Uh, he said, Coach, i got to learn all these plays. I said, yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's been a lot of plays for him, and he's gotten better. This week was better than last week. You know, last week it was, uh, you know, just looking at the wristband and having to turn over more than one wristband was a, oh, holy cow, there's more, you know, and kept going over. <laughs> then he had to learn numbers past 100, you know, so it was one of those deals where you had to find them and go stuff like that. So uh, it was a transition for him. I think he's... He's grasping what we're talking about every day. He, he's a smart young young man. Uh, he's a talented young man. His deal is he's got to keep his motor running. You know, I mean, he, you got to transition. Quarterbacks have to have short memories. They can't have a long memory. If you, if you have a long memory, it's going to really kill you. You know, you got to go to the next play and go on. And sometimes he gets frustrated about it. I should have done that. Well, it's too late. Can't worry about that one. <laughs> How do you think that kind of himself in his first start? I thought he did really well. You know, uh, first pass he threw, you know, the bubble, I, I, it was a little bit more impressive to me. I thought it might go in the bleachers. He was so jacked <laughs> up. But he, he, he was so jacked up, he only went a little high. So, uh, you know, it was it was okay. Uh, I thought the first one really was going to go in the bleachers. He was amped up when he came in there. And he was a tremendous leader, a really good football player, and, you know, does a lot of really, really good things. You know, he's a good guy. He's played for us. He knows the system. He knows what we expect. Uh, really like the way he leads the team on the field. Dan talked about um, on, you guys were going to really study the third down and what was kind of going wrong. What have you seen that can maybe be improved upon? Execution. Third downs are so, uh, third down are so critical. Uh, either defense gets you off the field or you continue to stay on the field. And we've got to get better at that execution. Of it. I mean, you know, we're just not executing to the best of that right now. It's just, you know, one thing or another. One guy here, one guy there, one guy. You know, you can't put the finger on say exactly one person and correct it. Or one thing, it's just Mr. Simons. We've got to get that correct. This is the knee jerk there that you're in good third down, for, you know, spots, or you're not putting yourself in a good position on first and second. Well, at times. Uh, it, I can't say for sure on every instance, right. but you know, like the Oklahoma State game, there's a lot of penalties and stuff like that early in the year. Right. Uh, this last time, there wasn't near as many penalties, which there's a lot of improvement for that in the second game. But again, there's still chances of, of missed assignments there that we need to correct. I was, yeah, was going to ask you about the kiss cam. I mean, uh, the kiss cam. I had so many tweets and <laughs> on Facebook about the kiss cam. Oh, that was just a setup. To tell us to make out with the air. And we did, so shout out to Bob, Chris Gaines, and Alan. Is this no shave September for you? Oh, uh, I'm probably going to keep it the whole season. Everybody like hates it, so I, like I figured I'd I do it just, just because everybody hates it. I told Justin every time he asked me when I'm going to cut it, I'm going to just, that's an extra month adding on to it. <laughs> when are they going to put the statue of you up in Puckett? Uh, probably never. <laughs> 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 I don't know what it's going to be a turtle or, or me myself. Christian has probably been very few players that in the game play offense, defense, and special teams. What was talk about your mindset when you're on the field going back and forth? Uh -oh. I mean, it's just natural. I mean, I played defense three years. Uh, this is my first year playing offense. Everything kind of clicked. So, I mean, it was nothing just major. I mean, it was, I say, physically fatiguing, but mentally I was, I was all there. I knew what to do. Um, Coach Collins just pulled me to the side. Him and Coach Mullen were just like, um, Turtle, we need you to play a little linebacker. And I was like, all right, that's fine, you know, whatever. He's like, well, you may not come up the field because after that you got to play special teams and turn back around and play off. I was like, well, that's even better. <laughs> so I was up to the task and he gave me the opportunity and I took advantage of it. How much do you enjoy that, not coming off the field? Oh, I love it. I felt like I was in high school again, just playing in small town pocket, just never coming out the field. I just felt like I was in pocket having fun. What drew more reaction from your teammates, the not coming out the field or kiss cam? Probably not coming out the field. I don't think uh, too many teammates paid attention to the kiss cam. <laughs> <laughs> what about Twitter? 
Uh, I got a lot of tweets from a lot of ladies. <laughs> but no. <laughs> no, uh, my girlfriend didn't like that too much. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, we just having fun, and they put it up. How do you think you did it offensively? You got your, really, this first game, you got significant snaps tied in. How would you say? Offensively, I was just doing a lot of blocking and a couple pass routes. I mean, it was just basic, um, basic things we went over that week, and uh, I feel like I did pretty good.